Hi, dear doctors and homeopathy lovers, welcome to our channel Global Health Helpline. Today we will learn about a homeopathic medicine glonoenum from the book Lectures on Homeopathic M. Eteria Medica by James Tyler Kent. Please subscribe our channel to be connected with us. Please like and share this video. Let's begin. Glonoenum Head The most common feature in this remedy is the surging of blood to the head and to the heart. A patient often describes the state as a feeling as if all the blood in the body must be rushing are on the heart, with a sense of heat or a boiling sensation in the region of the heart, or in the left side of the chest. Again he complains of a surging in the head. A warm glowing sensation in the head or a feeling of intense glowing from the stomach or from the chest up into the head, attended at times with loss of consciousness. There are also wave-like sensations in the head, as if the skull were being lifted up and lowered, or as if it were being expanded and contracted. Along with this there is most intense pain, sometimes as if the head would burst, sometimes great soreness in the head or a sense of soreness felt in the skull. Another accompaniment of the surging is great throbbing, synchronous with the heat of the heart, and when the skull has this soreness then the throbbing is like the beating of hammers, and every pulsation is painful, so that there are painful pulsations and sometimes painless pulsations. The pulsations are tremendous and when they are greatest in the head they are felt also in the extremities. The fingers and toes pulsate, there is pulsation throughout the back, and it seems that the whole body throbs. If this continues a while the soreness in the skull is likely to come on and with it the painful th, robbing, every throb is a pain. In this state, with every jar in stepping, and every motion, it seems as if the head would be crushed. Throbbing The throbbing becomes more painful from motion. The vomiting which attends this condition relieves. The head is relieved in the open air, it is worse in the warmth, and is often relieved from the application of cold. It is made worse by lying down, or lying, with the head low. In the extremities we have great coldness. The extremities cold, pale and perspiring, the head hot and the face flushed and purple or bright red. The pupils are dilated and the eyes red. Now. If this progresses only a little while, the tongue becomes dry, red and then brown. There is no great thirst, but the mouth is very dry. The eyelids become dry and stick to the eyeballs. At times the skin becomes dry and hot, and the face is red and glistens. All degrees of confusion of mind, even loss of consciousness, will be present. Headaches have I not described to a great extent that which is seen in a typical sunstroke? It is noticeable also that glonoin symptoms are worse in the heat of summer and relieved in winter. Are The dull headaches and the continuous headaches are aggravated from warm weather and ameliorated f. Rom cold. They are worse in the sun and better in the shade. All sorts of contrivances will be resorted to by glonoin patients to keep the sun's beat from the Head. When he has had these troubles for years, and it has become a chronic state, he will never go out in the warmth of the sun without an umbrella. Glonoin corresponds to congestive states in the head that come on suddenly, especially from heat, but also from gaslight, or from any bright light. The headaches that book keepers are subject to, especially in those that have at their desk, or over the head. A hot gas light the bright light accompanied by the heat so close to the head will make this in the ideal subject to headaches. These headaches are relieved by going into the cold air. The headaches all day when he's at his books, and when he goes home at night and lies down the headache comes on again, and he busts to be bolstered up in bed. He wants the head high, and cold applications to the head, the headache is relieved from a long sleep not generally relieved from siesta. From lying down and taking a nap the headache is sometimes aggravated, but from a good long sleep, a night's sleep, he is refreshed. 
his feet and hands become warm, the feverish state, and the throbbing all over the body subsides and he wakes up in the morning comfortable, but if he goes out in the sun, or goes to the gaslight, he comes home with the headache again. In electric lights have been brought into use there is not so much heat in the light, but gas throws out an immense amount of heat in its light. The child comes down with cerebro, spinal meningitis, the neck is drawn back, the face is intensely hot, red and shiny, the eyes congested or glassy, the head and upper part of the body are very warm, the feet and hands and lower portions of the body and the extremities are cold and covered with co. LD sweat. It is a most violent congestion to the brain and spinal cord. Convulsions come on convulsions throughout all the limbs, the neck and whole body drawn back, oh pistotonos. Cold feels good to the head, heat feels good to the extremities. The warm room increases the convulsions. When the lower limbs are covered with clothing in a cool room and the windows open, the convulsions are relieved and the patient breaths more easily. With this head congestion there is difficulty in breathing and audible palpitation. The head is made worse from shaking or jar, from stooping, from bending head backwards, after lying down, when ascending steps. It is aggravated in damp weather, and in the sun, while working under the gaslight, after overheating with copious sweat, and from the touch of the hat. The weight of the hat is a very common aggravation in headaches in school children. The little ones work all day in a hot stuffy room and feel better in the open air, but the weight of the hat seems an encumbrance as in nitric acid and calcarea force. The glonoin patient is also worse from wine and from stimulants, and from mental application. When the headache is on he cannot think, and he cannot write. An additional hindrance to writing is that he trembles so that he cannot write trembling and throbbing of the fingers so that he is unable to do his work or perform any delicate work with the fingers or hands. We have puerperal convulsions with such an appearance as I have described. We may have the same violence in congestive chills or in any type of congestion of the brain. Brain There is a milder form of trouble that calls for its use, a condition corresponding to the chronic types of disease. This milder form exists where the patient has simply what might be called a hyperemia of the brain, a rush of blood to the head when able to be about. It comes in spells, comes in moments when we least expect it. While walking on the street he feels a surging to the brain like a flush of heat and a flush on th, e face, his hands tremble, and the hands and feet become cold, he breaks out in a sweat. He looks around him and does not know which way to go home. He does not know where his dwelling is. He looks in the faces of friends and they seem strange. He loses his way when bees near home. It is a confusion which soon passes away, and he feels better again. But these spells come closer together, and constitute the earlier stages of softening of the brain. The surging of blood to the brain is attended with dizziness. He rolls and staggers, and must take hold of things, and especially does he suffer in this way from a warm day, or from the heat and light of the sun. In threatened apoplexy, and when apoplexy has taken place, if the violent pressure keeps on, think of this remedy. The clot may not be at first in the place to take life, it may be outside of the lifeline, but if the congestion continues that blood clot will increase. Ooch medicines as opium and glonoin relieve the blood pressure when the symptoms agree. They equalize the circulation, and the patient may not die. A paralytic condition in one arm or leg may go on for a while, and at the end of many weeks or months the motion may be regained, and the patient recover, whereas if the suitable remedy had not been administered to reduce that blood pressure the continue, ed congestion would certainly have ended in death in a few days. The stertorous breathing, the coma, the history, and the general appearance of an apoplectic patient are found in this remedy, but the intense heat that comes on in many cases of apoplexy along with a shiny skin and coldness, 
S of the extremities are the guiding features. Opium is the most frequently indicated medicine, but it must not be administered in large doses. The highest potencies are the best and one single dose is enough. In a case noted it says, frantic attempts to jump from the window. The headache was so intense that the patient became violent and attempted to jump from the window. You may rest assured that with his headache there was all this determination of blood to the head. It is enough to make one frantic to feel this continued hammering upon every fraction of the skull. He cannot lie down, and he cannot walk, because every step increases the jar, so you see why it is that the word frantic is wet there. The patient becomes frantic with the pain. Another expression used is disinclination to step around. The patient wants the room perfectly still. If sitting up in bed, you will often find a glonoin patient with both hands pressing upon the head with all the power p, possible until the arms are perfectly exhausted. He wants the head pressed upon all sides. Wants it bandaged, or a tight cap fitted down upon it. The headache is worse from bending backward and from stooping forward. There are times when the headache is so severe that lying back upon the pillow cannot be tolerated. There is a sense of great heaviness in the head. You will notice, in reading over these congestive headaches as reported, that each patient has a different way of describing his headache and yet all have the same story t. Hotel, that of violent determination of blood to the head. Ome months after being violently jarred by being thrown from a carriage, a sensitiveness of the upper part of the back and neck came on. There are two strong characteristics of glonoin in that cure, viz, aggravation from wine and the aggravation from lying down. The other symptoms might have pointed to other remedies, but these two features are there. It is interesting when reading a case, if you have first a knowledge of the materia medica, to note what symptoms are verified when you do not know the materia medica then the case is confused. Ing. Now, as we glance over that description we see at once these two things verified and the rest is fairly consistent. Very commonly the pain begins in the occiput and goes to the forehead, but the whole head is in a state of throbbing. But, we notice more particularly, the aggravation from motion and the least noise. This patient will sit in perfect quietude and silence for hours. You will be astonished to know how long a glonoin patient can sit without moving a muscle, because motion is so painful. Also aggravation from lying with the head low and after sleeping. It is important for you to know what that sleeping means. As I have said before, the patient very often is worse after a little sleep but the common state is relief after a prolonged sleep. If he can sleep long enough it will subside, unless it be the congestive sleep, or coma, and then it is a different thing. Amelioration from cold and external pressure. Vertex burning hot, likewise upper part of back. The whole crown of the head feels as if it were covered by a hot iron, as if an oven were close by. Hot especially in the back of the neck and between the shoulders. The burning heat seems to appear at the top of the head and extend down between the shoulders, a sensation of heat, as from a band. Face bluish, with a heavy, stupid expression. The face is bright red, but if the condition becomes severe the face assumes a dusky appearance, and the longer this state lasts the more dusky it becomes. That is true with apoplexy and also with sunstroke. When the sunstroke first comes on the face is bright red, intensely hot and shiny, but as the heat increases the face grows dusky, even to purple in all of these cerebral congestions there is a stupid, heavy expression, even going on to coma. Frequent deep inspirations. With this congestion of the head there is commonly vomiting, palpitation of the heart, pain in the stomach great difficulty in breathing and finally loss of consciousness. In another clinical case reported we read, every pulsation is felt as if the head would burst. Now, suppose the head bones were already intensely sensitive and sore and the head filled as full as possible with blood, 
and then you commenced hammering upon the blood column you can understand that the pain would be m most intense and would soon end in stupefaction uncanny eyes bluish pallor under the eyes red eyes with photophobia optical illusions black specks before the eyes blindness face pale in spite of high fever in all of these cerebral congestions of great violence the pulse fluctuates it even becomes fine and wiry and hard sometimes becomes irregular and also slow another common accompaniment of these congestions is tumefaction about the neck the neck feels full the collar must be opened as it causes choking as if he would suffocate even in the chronic state in the one who stands upon the street corner not knowing his way home be cause of the surging of blood in the head that state is accompanied by choking and the collar causes uneasiness about the neck like lachesis he chokes and swells up under the ears there is not only a sensation but with the sensation there is actual swelling tumefaction about the neck and throat under the chin and the glands become swollen the next circumstance in the text that brings forth the general aspect of the remedy is in connect t on with the ketamenia the menstrual flow does not appear it is delayed with violent congestion to the head violent headaches and these symptoms already described these congestions may also come on during the menstrual period again if a uterine hemorrhage stops suddenly or a copious flow from any part stops suddenly the patient comes down with great violence and the blood rushes to the head there are many conditions and complaints in life where we have surging of blood to the head when this will be the remedy wanted persons who are subject to palpitation with dyspnea upon any effort he cannot go up hill he cannot walk along the pavement without bringing on palpitation and dyspnea any little exertion or excitement brings on the rush of blood to the heart and fainting spells fainting spells in women who are not supposed to be subject to fainting great weakness palpitation trembling of the limbs shaking of one or both hands as with palsy laborious action of the heart is a strong feature of the remedy pulsation all over fluttering in the region of the heart pulse quick irregular slow or quick and wiry there are some persons that are apparently plethoric very much affected by the slightest exertion and who have pulsation all over pulsation in a warm room they are sometimes relieved by opening the window if it is cool by fanning by cold air by cold applications to the head in keeping with the remedy this is clinical application of it children get sick in the night after sitting up at an open fire or falling asleep there bad effects from having the hair cut belladonna is generally thought of for taking cold in the head from having the hair cut bad effects from being exposed to the sun's rays bad effects from sunstroke thanks for watching full video press the red subscribe button and then bell icon to get the, the latest updates